Another day, another story. The story my dearest mother is almost an everyday occurrence. Adoptions and adoptions happen quite often among our friends, acquaintances, and neighbors. Maybe you, too, have pondered adopting at some point, as I have. To date, I haven't, for some reason. But I do know that God richly blesses the person who fosters an orphan. Three pairs of children's eyes watch my mother's every move. The children were fascinated to watch as their mother whipped cream with a mixer, smeared cream, and then decorated a large sponge cake. She baked this cake for the birthday of her twins, Tolia and Eli. They were six years old each. Only my dear mother knows how to make such delicious cakes, said Tolia, putting his hand into the pan and picking up the rest of the cream on his finger. He was glad that he was not sent to bed, as little Lisa, and that he could stay in the kitchen and help his mother to prepare for the holiday. And children's help, as you know, is to finish the leftovers of cream, fruit, berries and finish the delicious syrups. Our mom always bakes such a beautiful cake on her birthday, Aaliyah remarked, the tastiest cake in the world. The girl looked at her mother, trying to determine whether her words had made any impression. Mom smiled silently. Mom, suddenly asked Elia, do all children have such cakes made by their mothers? I think not, she answered briefly. And why? Aaliyah interrogated. Because, intervened in the conversation her older sister Vera, that not all children have moms. But there are children without a mother? Aaliyah wondered. They do, confirmed Vera, but if one of the children's fathers and mothers die, they are put in an orphanage. Mommy, Aaliyah pulled her mother by the sleeve, and what is an orphanage? Mommy sighed and somehow reluctantly began to talk. An orphanage is a house where children without parents live. There are tutors and nannies who give the children clothes, food, and even toys. But they don't have a mom and dad. Are they dead? Aaliyah wouldn't let up. Mom, decorating the cake, put the last cherry in the cream and wiped her hands with a towel. It happens, my children, she said, that mothers abandon their children and put them in an orphanage, too. And there are more abandoned children in orphanages than orphans. And how are they abandoned? Tolia asked. They just leave them in the maternity hospital, and they don't want to feed them, and they don't want to pick them up, and they don't even want to look at them. Not all mothers do this, but there are cases. The conversation was getting too serious, and the children fell silent. Each in his own way perceived what he heard and regretted, thinking of those whom their own mothers did not want to take. Living under the caring eye of loving parents, they had no idea that there were unhappy children in the world who were not needed by their mothers. Mother, Vera asked cautiously, have you ever seen children left behind? Sometimes unexpected questions or words make the human heart beat faster, and thoughts go somewhere far away, into the past. And the old, almost forgotten pain of the soul comes back to life again and again. Yes, my mother answered, once, when I was in the maternity ward, there was a woman in our room who didn't want to take her baby. She said she didn't need it, that it would be a burden on her. She was very young. Mom was silent for a while. There was silence in the kitchen. The refrigerator rumbled and the wall clock ticked. The impressionable Vera, trying to hide the tears that came to her eyes, raised her head high, pretending to look up at the ceiling. She always did that when she did not want to cry in public. When I found out, my mother went on, I tried to talk the woman into taking her baby, but she wouldn't even hear of it. And he was so cute, that boy. It just tore my heart to pieces to think of his birth mother leaving him. I cried all night. All night I prayed to God for this child, that God would help him. But that woman never took him. And my dear mother, said Tolia in a loud voice after a pause, she took all of us, and loves us, and bakes delicious cakes. Annoyed Vera was ready to hit her brother, because her mother, after a moment's hesitation, began to rush the children to go to bed. If he had kept quiet, maybe Vera would have found out what had become of the little boy. But her mother didn't want to talk about it anymore. There was nothing to be done, and the children went off to rest. Mama fiddled around in the kitchen cleaning up for a while longer. Then she went to the children's room and opened the door to make sure the children were asleep. Then she opened the closet and took out the two packages the children had stashed there, in which they would wake up in the morning and find their desired gifts. Mama quietly went to Ollie's bed, lifted the pillow, and carefully put the bundle. 
She put the second roll under Tolia's pillow and was about to leave when she noticed that Vera was still awake. The mother came up to her daughter and asked in a whisper. Why aren't you asleep? Vera turned her face to her mother, it was flaming and wet with tears. Mommy, she said, sobbing softly, I can't forget that little baby, I feel so sorry for him. I keep thinking about him, and I can't sleep. Where do you think he is now? Stroking the girl's head, her mother pressed her to her breast and began to whisper in her ear, comforting her. I told you I prayed all night for him. God hears our prayers. He heard my prayer. You don't have to cry, all I can tell you is that this baby was adopted. And he has a daddy and a mommy who love him now. He is well, God has taken care of him. Satisfied with that answer, Vera breathed a sigh of relief. She mentally thanked God that he was so attentive to her prayers. And not only does he listen, but he answers. And if I ever meet that boy, she thought, I'll tell him it was my mother who prayed for him. I would not want, thought the mother, quietly closing the door of the nursery, for you children to know now that this boy lives and grows up among you.